This is the Renault Zoe, currently the cheapest way to get into a brand new electric car in Ireland. Starting at just under €25,000, this stylish little super mini has been enjoying a massive surge in sales recently, as people finally start to embrace the idea of zero emissions motoring. Today we're going to have a look at its pros and cons against its competitors in the fast-growing electric market. We'll start with practicality because while the Renault Zoe might look small, it's actually deceptively spacious inside. And the boot at 338 litres is larger than the Hyundai Kona Electric, the BMW i3 and its own super mini sibling, the Clio. Now it does still fall short of larger rivals like the Leaf and the e-Golf, but really that's not bad at all. Now the finish could be a little better and the seats don't fold completely flat or split, but they do fold. Meaning that while it still might not be your first choice for a trip to Ikea, you can carry larger items on occasion when you need to. Technically, there are three seats in the back, but realistically only two are going to be comfortable back here. Head and leg room are okay, pretty typical super mini stuff, and the kids that are more than likely to be back here should be happy enough. Because the battery is packed under the floor, you do get a slightly raised position on the floor, which means that if you've got longer legs, you probably end up getting a very good view of your knees. But luckily for me, that's not a problem I have to deal with. Back in the front, there's a decent bit of space on offer, and the raised floor in this instance does mean that you get a slightly elevated driving position, which gives you a nice commanding view of the road ahead. I'm not sure how those north of six foot will fare here in terms of headroom, but there is plenty of adjustment in both the seat and the wheel to help you get comfortable. Storage areas could be better, and a few of them are just a little bit too dinky to be all that useful. The cup holders in particular are on the small side, unless of course you're a big fan of a particular energy drink. The ergonomics are otherwise very good. Like a lot of EVs, they've gone with a lighter colour scheme in here and this bronzy shade does give it a nice bright airy feel. All Zoe's get this integrated touchscreen multimedia system as standard, including an integrated TomTom sat-nav, which will help you find and direct you towards public charging points. Now the graphics aren't the best in the world and the system can take a little while to get the hang of, but it's still pretty impressive as a standard feature, especially the sat-nav aspect. Now that leads me nicely on to trim levels and you might want to grab a cup of tea here because they certainly haven't made this part easy for me. And a lot of it depends on what battery slash motor combination that you go with. Insert jazzy music here. The range kicks off with the Expression Nav R90, which starting at just under €25,000 with current government grants, comes with a slightly lower power output. It still gets the 40 kilowatt hour battery and puts out about 90 HP. If you upgrade to the Dynamic Nav, that will also upgrade the motor to this R110 model, which ups that power output to 110 HP, funnily enough or you can choose the Q90 instead, which will increase the charging speed. And we'll talk more about charging now in just a minute. But Dynamic Nav also adds 16 inch alloy wheels, parking sensors, automatic lights and wipers, and a hands-free key card. The R1110 starts at just under 28,000 euro and the Q90 at 29. This being a test car is obviously the top of the range. It's called the Signature Nav and comes with this faux leather upholstery, a reversing camera and a 3D Bose sound system. This R110 model with metallic paint comes in at a smidge under €31,000 on the road. So let's talk range. When the Zoe 40 first came out, it was quoted as having a range of 400 kilometers. And like with all figures at that time, that was fairy tale stuff. So the new WLTP real world tested figures are 300 kilometers in summer and 200 kilometers in winter. Or in Ireland, where it's not unusual to have both of those in the same week, somewhere in between the two. Now, like with all EVs, that will depend very much on how you drive it, and external circumstances like outside temperature and whether or not you need to have the heater on all have an impact, explaining the difference between the summer and the winter figures. And again, like with all EVs, and like with all cars in general, in fact, the heavier you lean on the throttle, the heavier it will be on juice, just battery juice in this case. I've been averaging about 18 and a half kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which means that driving as I am now, it should be capable of about 220 kilometers. And that's with no major changes to my driving style and over a mix of different conditions, including on the motorway, where you do start to see that consumption jump a bit. 
It's also been a pretty cold week, so I haven't been shy with the aircon either. So that puts consumption about on par with the e-golf, but because this one has a bigger battery, it should be able to keep going for that bit longer. But again, even 200 kilometers, and I know I'm always saying this, is more driving than most people will do in a single day. And with the help of a home charger, which you will get a 600 euro government grant towards, the Renault Zoe is a very capable commuting option. A full charge will take about six hours on a standard seven kilowatt home charger, or like most people, you can just plug it in overnight and forget about it until the morning. Speaking of charging, one of the Renault Zoe's greatest strengths is its clever chameleon charger, which will allow it to draw the maximum power from a source. Now that's particularly handy when it comes to public chargers because it means that even from a standard public charger, it can draw the full 22 kilowatt hours, meaning you should be able to get close to a full charge in about two hours or on a fast charger, 80% in an hour, which makes it one of the better options for those who do longer distances regularly. As for what it's like to drive, sometimes I find it hard to come up with new words to describe what it's like driving an electric car because it's all just so straightforward. You hit the accelerator and you go. Very smooth, very quiet, instant torque and just really, really easy to drive. In fact, I'd say this is an ideal learner's car because of the neat dimensions and it's easy, predictable handling. If I had one complaint, it would be that because of where that battery is located under the floor, it can get just a bit crashy over rough road surfaces or over ramps around the suburbs. It also makes a few quirky noises, like this indicator sound. And you also get this funky little jingle on startup. But I think that all just adds to the character. The Renault Zoe is a very lovable little car. It's well specced and comes with an impressive range for the price tag, proving that you don't need a Tesla budget to join the exclusive electric car club. Is that enough to make you want to sign up? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and if you'd like to see more like it, you know what to do by now.